This can't compete in the objective sound quality aspects compared to the other options on the market, but things it is good at and our subjective preferences can easily outweigh the measurement downsides. Meet Sivgarobin SV021, a $150 dynamic driver closed back over your headphone. Please leave a like and let's get to it. It's built like a masterpiece for this price point. There are two color variants available, black and light brown. I picked the brown one, as it looks more natural and fun. Both versions feature real wood ear caps that are polished for an extra shiny look. There is a Sivga logo engraved in them, but it's not super catchy. They rather went for a stealth type of branding, which is great. The yokes are made out of metal, feel sturdy and offer size adjustment that also feels very high quality. In addition to that, there is cup tilt, but not swivel. However, I can confidently say that it's not going to be an issue, as the ear pads make up for it perfectly. They are extremely soft and adapt to any ear shape very well. They are rather medium small sized, which means that your ear is probably going to touch them in one place or another. But no worries, as it's not an issue at all. The synthetic leather is also superb in terms of comfort, but it can get a little warm inside on a hot day when you spend multiple hours in these. Nothing crazy though. The headband is also covered in the same leather-like material with some foam on the bottom side that touches your head. This makes it profile lower and still provides sufficient padding as the headphone itself is super lightweight, coming at 275 grams. Moreover, the clamping force is very light it doesn't add any unnecessary pressure. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're still watching. Thanks a lot. Then we have the connectors. They are dual 2.5mm, which allows for a balanced connection with an aftermarket cable, but it's not as common as double 3.5mm. I didn't find that to be a problem, and they probably couldn't fit 3.5mm jacks in there, so we were left with something more compact. It's likely not going to be an issue for you as well, as they are including a matching cable. More on which in just a moment. Summing up this part, it's built in a way that provides very good comfort, looks and material choices. Nothing rattles here, nothing feels like it's about to break down. I usually don't dedicate an entire video part just to talk about the extras we are getting in a box, but I'll make an exception this time, as it's really up there. First of all, we're getting a super nice quality linen pouch that can fit the headphone, a cable and some decamp dongle with no issues. I used it extensively during my vacation trip and it stood the test perfectly. Then we are getting a 3.5mm to quarter jack adapter that can fit the included cable. The cable we are getting in the box is fantastic. That's why I previously mentioned that it probably will be enough for you, with no need for further upgrades unless you want a balanced connection, or for some reason something even more fancy. It comes color matched to your headphones with a high quality material braiding over it. It's a single-ended cable terminated with 3.5mm on the amplifier end and of course dual 2.5mm on the headphone end. The connectors used here are amazing, fully metal with a nice texture that helps greatly with the grip, plus a spring style strain relief. The plugs fit extremely tightly and snugly. You might initially think that something is wrong, but they simply require more force for you to push in than you're expecting, which decreases the contact resistance and makes sure that they stay in place. The entire cable is pretty much non-microphonic, which is another reason not to replace it. It uses a 50mm dynamic driver developed in-house by Sivga for smooth and enduring listening. The diaphragm is ultra thin and flexible, made of polycarbonate and fiber. This material combination is supposed to result in a lush and natural sound when the music is playing. The magnet used for driving it is 3mm thick to provide strong power to the driver. They even disclose the coil material and it is made out of special copper clad aluminum wire for high sensitivity and softness in the sound. The frequency response is specified to range from 20Hz to 20kHz, which covers the entire human hearing range. Its sensitivity is very very high, at 105 dB. The impedance is rather low for a dynamic driver, coming at 32 ohms, 
the impedance is also surprisingly flat. This combination makes driving it not a problem, no matter what gear you'd like to use. I tried it with high power desktop amplifiers, low power dongles, Delta Sigma and R2 Ardax, and even my MacBook. What I found is that it sounds good with pretty much everything. It's virtually impossible to underpower it. However, I tend to prefer it with a bit of bright leaning sources to bring up the top end just a little bit and get better tonal balance. Initially, its tonality may come off as uneven, and to some extent, it is. There is a big boost in the mid bass region that doesn't extend to the sub bass. Then we have a large dip in the mid range at 500 Hz and a slight boost in the treble. This makes for a very exciting and fun presentation at first, but it has some downsides as well, more on which later. In budget headphones, especially closed back ones, the bass is done in one of two ways. It can be either very light and not impactful, or bloated. Here it leads definitely on the more bloated end, which means that there is a lot of it. This headphones bass isn't full, but it's full of bass. It's not incredibly resolving in terms of the finest detail, it's not pushing them forcefully at you, and in terms of the source gear, it's not going to reveal lots of issues with your chain. All of that contributes to the vocal performance. They often sound generally empty and hollow, probably due to the dip in the lower midrange. It also tends to make them a bit echoey, making their presentation quite unique. At higher volumes you can expect some shoutiness, which can be distracting, but since it's a closed back with decent sound isolation, there are very few situations where you have to turn up the volume a lot. The vocal performance can be described as very intimate. They play inside your head, in the very center. The soundstage isn't particularly wide, and I found that it likes to put things behind my ears. That's especially noticeable when the sound source is spent to the hard left or the hard right. On the other hand, the instruments sound much wider than the vocals. Not wide in general, but wider. It's a pleasant effect, often desirable in headphones, as it is quite literally a combination of being intimate and wider at the same time for the right sounds. The instrumental performance is good. Their timbre isn't bad, despite the crazy uneven measured frequency response. I'm not sure how they achieved that, but I'm suspecting that it comes from their treble response. String instruments and drums tend to pop from the mix for some reason, just as if they were playing louder from the rest. For the technical performance, it's generally not impressive and doesn't stand out much from the crowd. But I liked one thing in particular about it. The decay. It's very long and satisfying, making percussion, violins, cellos and large-scale music oddly satisfying. 